The motherboard that you see here, I paid 40 bucks for on AliExpress. And now it's a machinist B450M, which promises to support every single M4 CPU, starting from a Ryzen 5 1600, all the way up to a Ryzen 7 5800X3D. Is it actually decent or is it just another Chinese scam like a lot of hardware we've seen going on this year? Well, let's take a look. Now, starting from the packaging, it's very, very basic. They only give you an IO shield and a SATA cable, nothing else. But for 40 bucks, I can't really complain. Let's actually take a look at the board itself. So it has this unique white appearance and it's fully white, the PCB front, and back. And uh, the first thing I noticed, which I'm not happy about, is it's completely missing any kind of VRM heatsinks. So the component of the board which handle the voltage regulation of the CPU are completely naked, which means they are more likely to overheat and to run hotter. But we're gonna, of course, test that later. I also got a thermal imaging camera to check so we can make sure it's running properly. Another thing I noticed, which I'm not happy about, is it only has a four pin for CPU power. The IO shield is pretty limited, but actually better than a lot of cheap A320 and B450 motherboards coming in with four USB 2.0, two USB 3.0, gigabit LAN, HDMI port, MVGA port, and of course, audio in and out. Another thing is it will come without CMOS battery because they cannot ship internationally batteries because they deem it as dangerous. So you will have to buy a battery for around 50 cents. Now it has just dual channel of RAM, but that's actually better because Ryzen really loves dual channel in two single slots if you wanna get higher speed stable. And also we're getting a full NVMe slot, which supposedly can handle PCIe Gen 4 speeds, even though B450 is not supposed to do that. We also have a full AM4 backplate with a standard AM4 mounting bracket. We have USB 3.0, no USB-C, that's to be expected. And we have complete lack of RGB control on the motherboard. So if you want RGB, you will need either an external controller or something which is not controllable. But again, for the price, I can't really complain about RGB itself. This is also not supposed to have PCIe Gen 4 on the slot, on the main PCIe X16 slot, but they claim it has it. And little spoiler, it actually has it. So with that said, I say we get cheap CPU, RAM and cooler in it. I actually bought a $7 cooler from AliExpress, which I wanted to try on it. And we are gonna be properly stress testing this thing because I got Ryzen 7 5300X to put on it and to see what happens to our motherboard. So I say we get it built and we take a look at a few tests and see if it's actually decent because one can only go so far by analyzing the PCB. Well, here we are after I spent a week with this machinist motherboard and I have tested literally everything I could with it. And a little spoiler, it's not too bad, but it's not perfect either. I found quite a few issues. So let's get started. First off, the install itself is pretty straightforward. It has everything you may need for a regular PC build. So the CPU is lots in nice. You can plug your cooler properly. It has all the connectors, USB 3.0, whatever you may need. They all work fine. You can go ahead, install Windows, and it's gonna all work properly out of the box. Boot times are also pretty quick. Once we're into Windows, I decided to do a quick CPU-Z check and I went ahead and checked the BIOS version so they ship it to you with the BIOS from the end of 2023. So this is the first negative thing because it means they don't bother uh, to update your motherboards with a more recent firmware. Now, if you just plug your motherboard in and use it, it's gonna work fine. It actually has PCIe Gen 4 on both the SSD and the PCIe slot, which I find pretty interesting. Dual channel is working and it's gonna automatically set your RAM at 2666 megahertz. Here's also the CPU-Z benchmark, which I run with a 5800X and some standard 3200 megahertz RAM. Performance is all in line. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the BIOS. The BIOS itself is very ugly, but uh, I really like it. I think it's better than some BIOSes from ASUS and Gigabyte and the other manufacturers because it's very straightforward for me. Since I'm used to old school BIOSes, this kind of reminds me of the kind of biases you, you see back in 2015, around that time, which I find very easy to navigate. It also has the advanced AMD overclocking tab, so you can go ahead and actually undervolt your CPU, do any kind of overclocking or tuning you may wanna do. Following the tutorials I show on the channel, you can literally undervolt your CPU, overclock your RAM, even overclock your CPU, and even change the FCLK to tune your memory better. It's all very good, except I could not make the motherboard boot 
with the XMP. And here we're gonna start with all the negatives from this motherboard. So if you just buy it out of the box, go ahead, try to boot the XMP, it is quite simply not gonna work. You have to enable the XMP, put it on profile one, and then manually set the voltage, or it's not gonna get the voltage. But even like that, it is not gonna boot. Now I thought, okay, maybe it's just, I have a bad CPU with a bad IMC, things happen. So I swapped out the CPU, but still, same result. So I figured, okay, maybe if I update the BIOS, it's gonna go better. So I went ahead, downloaded the latest BIOS, which procedure is not the best, even though it has a flashback button that works, updated it, and now the XMP is working. So they did fix it in the BIOS, but this means you're forced to update the BIOS, downloading their BIOS from the Chinese website, which takes a bit longer than a normal motherboard, but this is not a big deterrent in my opinion. Let's now talk about the main issue with this motherboard. So when I was taking a look at it previously, I mentioned how the VRMs do not have any kind of fit sync. Now I decided to go with a Ryzen 7 purposefully to put it under stress. And if we go ahead and launch a simple Prime 95 stress test, you can see that not only does the CPU go to 100 degrees, that's because I picked a small air cooler, but under full load, unlocked TDP over 100 watts, the VRMs themselves are throttling hard. Now the good thing is the sensor in how the monitor works, but I then went ahead and with a thermal imaging camera, I cross-referenced the results and the VRMs are actually running at 95 degrees surface temperature, which means under they're probably at 105 degrees, which is throttle level for VRMs. So you could not be running those VRMs under synthetic load 24 seven. You would end up breaking the motherboard if you had a Ryzen 7 like this. Good part is if you undervolt your CPU, as I show in my tutorials, you're gonna drop 20 degrees from the CPU itself and about the same from the VRM temps. So if you run a Ryzen 7 undervolted, you can now run it on this motherboard even under 24 seven load. I still, however, wouldn't do it unless you have a very good airflow. I would at least put a fan over the VRMs and even consider making my own heatsink if it was my personal motherboard. If you're gaming, however, you're not gonna encounter any of those issues and the VRM temperature stays at around 70 degrees under full load with no airflow on it while gaming, which means this motherboard is good for Ryzen 5, fully unlocked, no problem. Ryzen 7, even at stock if you're just gaming, but hopefully undervolted and if you're just gaming. And if you wanna put a Ryzen 9 over here, I would definitely not recommend it. If you wanna do it, you can do it, but you need to undervolt it and severely power limiting, making it just a little bit faster than a Ryzen 7. And in my opinion, putting the board in a very possible situation where it's gonna break. So all in all, I do recommend this motherboard because it is simply so cheap. There is no competition on the market for this price point, but I think you should buy it for the right CPU and for the right PC in mind, not expecting to have a big upgrade path and being ready to have to deal with the little issues that come with it, bringing your own RGB controller, updating the BIOS and tweaking your CPU a little bit and maybe encountering issues with your RAM. If you've had a similar motherboard or any kind of Chinese aim for a motherboard, I wanna hear your opinion down below in the comments. So do let me know if you tried one which is better, if you tried one which is cheaper, and if you had a really bad experience with one, please let me know down in the comments. I would really like for this video to become a place where we can discuss this kind of motherboards and also let me know if you want me to take a look at more of those. Also, if you do want to see more of my videos, maybe drop a like and subscribe and I hope to see you guys again in another video. Bye bye.